On this week's episode of Thursdays with Robin Paul, we have from the HBO Max miniseries, The Peacemaker, Steve Agee. Plus, writer, director, actress, Lake Bell joins us to talk about her involvement in the brand new Hulu series, Pammy and Tommy. We're going to get into obscure DC characters, a little ASMR romantic tips for Valentine's Day, and we are going to get to the bottom of who threw a snowball at Michael Rappaport. All this and more on Thursdays with Robin Paul, starting right now. The longer we do this show, I feel like it's becoming like a real show. Do you yeah. feel like that? Sometimes do you ever worry that it's becoming a real show? I mean, we started this in the middle of the pandemic. We've been still doing it. And now celebrities will stop here on their way through town. I mean, this is it. This is where it's like, it's, I got to do uh, Fallon. I got to do Friend Zone, and I got to do Kimmel. It's like, everyone knows you got to hit all three. It's on the list. It's like these publicists are hitting us up. They're like, all please, time. please, can you take my celebrity client? And we're like, Ugh. I mean, we only have a, one slot a week. It's hard for us because we want to bring on our friends friends and have fun just yeah. goof off you know and we have to cover all the things that the people expect us to cover which is our lives uh talking about dad culture dad uh, dad culture talking about sex whips paul we haven't talked about whoa the sex Look whip that. in a long time and it occurred to me uh just recently that yeah. on behalf of the sex whip company I do want to say, look at, look at all, it's all, it's popping off in the chat. Yeah. This is not a sexual, I, I feel like I never really made it clear that this is not for sex. It's for self-defense. No, I, I think that you've tried to make it clear and we have come to the consensus that you are wrong, but I will say, uh, you know, um, that part of the lunar new year, I believe this is the year of the sex whip. If I'm not mistaken, I, I know it was yeah, the rabbit or the sex whip. I'm not quite sure but i think it's a sex whip well a lot of oh, people boy. thought this was kind of dick shaped which i yeah, always well, definitely is well i always pushed back on that um i don't know it's hard to decide when i bought this it was for self-defense because i didn't want to kill anyone I, I thought i would just subdue them with whipping and then that seemed really fucked up and like so it's just been in like a drawer in our house waiting for someone to break in. No one is broken in. And again, well, I was going to say, how many I, times have you used it to defend yourself? Well, I offer this up to the chat. Um, you guys know where I live. It's public information. Do not no, ask Paul, people to re do Paul, not do you, Rob. Every time you ask for a home invasion, you regret it. You regret it. I've regretted it several times in the past. I've I, in the past, I have said, please come and invade my home and do a mock work. a mock abduction of my family. Um, part, when I first, first met you, you had four kids. How many kids do you have right now? I have one currently. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. for three. But when I, um, the first time people abducted my family, mock abducted my family. Well, I ended they up actually getting, did though, right? Well, they did, but I, but I got, you know, um, I, I got my wife back, my my three kids are still missing but the great thing is was that I'm, also a thing because they charge less for your wife like you kind of made like a decision like you're like well i can't get all four oh, back, well you know it's, I, it's a negotiation they they highball you the people right. that took my wife and kids yeah. they come in at a very crazy number and you yeah. you know you work them down you work them down you work them down and i got a, i got a deal for my wife to get her back well i mean but they know <laughs> they, they know that you got that netflix money yeah, you I got, got that, that sweet Murderville, that sweet, sweet Murderville Netflix money. <laughs> but um, uh, <laughs> but yeah, finally, finally got my wife and kids uh, or my wife back. back, back. But what I was going to say was that when they were gone and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm still looking for them uh, actively. No, but, you know, I, I post on Craigslist and I say Just the way hey, that the way that OJ is looking for the killers, you're looking that's for right. the kids. Same way. I will say, Paul, to yeah. you that I got so much rest in that period and I got so much work time. It was a very productive time. So in a way, it was a blessing in disguise. Okay, wait, wait. You're saying that when your wife and kids were tooken, you yeah. Yeah, took looked, in. you took you, in. you enjoyed that as like a a, a, a moment of respite. Ooh, have a little bit of a term, uh define the term enjoy. Well, like you, you felt like 
you could take a breather. You felt like you were a little yeah, more relaxed. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, okay, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So you are, do not, do not, you should not be saying this. This could be held against you in a court of law. I think I'm not sure if streaming is admissible in a court of law. I don't think we have any lawyers think, in the chat. Think, yeah. There are no lawyers that watch this. Okay. There are, uh, no, I don't think that streaming or podcasts are admissible in the court of law. Okay. That is, sure. that is good to know. I'm going to write that down. And by the way, someone's asking in the chat, well, we have Adam Scott on because Adam Scott has a brand new show called severance, uh, yeah. directed by, uh, uh, Ben Stiller. And mm -hmm. I think we should definitely have him on. It'd be great. We should definitely him. have him on that. That trailer uh, looks great. That looks really the good. The best cast. It's just, yeah. I'm super psyched about that show. Uh, by the way, I will say, uh, you know, happy Lunar New Year to you. We were celebrating happy Year Lunar of the Dragon New Year. Yeah. Uh, over at, uh, in my family. We, we were doing that. And I, was, I don't know if you were reading any of your fortunes for the year, but uh, we were reading the fortunes of, you know, our birth year all around the table when we're having a uh, big dinner. And, um, my, one of my fortunes was don't drive North. That's true. In general, <laughs> that's always true. <laughs> don't drive North is a giant, like that is, that was too much North or Northeast. It's <laughs> Yeah, you try to always not drive north or northeast. That's common knowledge, Paul. Um, uh, yes, I mean, I'm what's sorry, what's, sorry. what's I, yes, I, I you're the tiger. I'm sorry, you're, you're the tiger. What, what what is what is up there for you? What do you? I think don't is know. It just said northward. Avoid driving north. Or you don't northeast. need to go up there. You don't need to go up there. I'm I'm telling you. Uh, I have never there's... read a fortune that was that specific. Uh, it was mm. a very a uh, very specific one. Yeah, I, I don't think you want to go north in general. Okay, yeah, you know, just stay, but stay how, south if if you can. Stay east and west. Is that all I should do? Is just go east and west? Just traverse? I think so. I think that's good advice. Yeah. Um, stay you know, an axis. You know, um, there's a lot going on, Paul. We we uh, there there was some. Uh, I noticed in the chat earlier, by the way, this chat is very friendly with uh, each other. They, I, yeah. I would be very surprised if there are not intra chat romances going on. And perhaps, uh, look, I, yeah. I, I, listen, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not accusing anyone. I wouldn't be surprised if there are double lives and some romances going on you know what i mean like people that are acting like oh no i'm not married i'm not in a relationship but you know if you are trying here we to, go here we go if you're trying to have a nice relationship right now i just want you to know that uh, there's a lot of things you can do to each other and one of the best things you can do to each other is ask each other how you're feeling talk about your emotions and then you will find yourself opening up. Yeah. Like sexy talk? That was pretty good. That was really good. But yeah, I just have noticed how friendly people are and how much of a little it's, like. Instead of, instead of saying, what do you want for dinner? I don't care. What do you want? Be specific and help narrow down choices. Mm, okay. I mean, that good? I mean, I'm giving love advice. I'm sorry. But yes, you, I didn't mean to cut you off. You were that, saying that reminds me that, well, I was just going to say that Valentine's is coming up. You know, there's, there's, yes. it, today is what the third. So, you know, we got, you know, 10 we got more days, 11 more days, really 10 11 more shopping days. days. Yeah. 10, 10 more shopping days till Valentine's. So it's yeah. just something to keep in mind. You know, you and I are married and spoken for and uh, you're, you're still married, right? I am married to a beautiful woman who is alive. Right. Um, what do you mean? Why did you, why did you say that? Why did you point that out? Well, I'm just saying that you know people want to know that I am married to a beautiful woman who is alive, okay. and if you want to talk to her, she may not pick up her phone, but she will text you back. Okay, I don't know why. Anyway. Okay, but, but yes, yeah, you're right. Valentine's, so Valentine's, is, Day Valentine's is, coming. is coming up, and uh, you know, love is in the air, and it yes. really, you know, uh, the pandemic, um, you know, provides some uh, some opportunities for love, and I feel like people are 
I dare, I'm just going to say it. I think people are lowering their standards. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm saying that people may have had a very specific list that they were looking for before, but after two years in isolation, guess what? It's time for the species to survive. The, the, I mean, maybe the survival just, of the species is the most important thing. You got to get out there. You got to have some good old fashioned. Uh, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it like this. You, you got to go out there, people, and you have to have some good old fashioned. Oh, hold on. I'm going to. Mm. Wait, is it there? Yeah, that's it. So, is it working? Okay. Yeah, it's working. Okay. You got to go out there and have some good. You got to go out there and have some good old fashioned. Love making. You have to put your things in other people's things. Yeah, it's just whatever whatever it is that tickles your things. Yes. Oh, and oh, it's just, you know, there's a, there's so much pressure. That's the thing is there's so much pressure. But now I will say the 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 silver lining of the pandemic is that mm -hmm. the standards have been lowered and now we can all just agree, shouldn't we just do this? Shouldn't we just Look, so, it's it's a great chance to take a chance, right? But it, you right. also have to make an impressive move. And Valentine's Day is coming up, which means mm -hmm. that you have to, I think, be stand out from the rest of the pack. Because yeah. you're right, people's people are lowering their you know their expectations. People are lowering their standards, but that doesn't mean that you can't still elevate above them. And the best way to do that, I always think. Yeah. is by sending your crush mm -hmm. the person that you might be interested in uh, mm -hmm. a cameo from one of their favorite celebrities oh i hadn't i hadn't really thought about that yeah so I mean, don't you saying, think yeah yeah i mean that's that is a great uh way to convey love to someone i, I was gonna say you mail them some vienna sausages libby Lib yeah well again rob we did talk about the advertising like i uh, I don't want to be advertising, uh, oh, okay. Vienna, yeah, Vienna sausages. Okay. Cause, cause, cause my thing yeah. was like, Hey, you know, if you're a guy, you could say, you know, Hey, here you go. And also my dick is bigger than that or, or whatever, you know? No, I mean, it, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah you don't I mean, have I, to. I'm have still to. upset with them because I, I, I shot a Super Bowl commercial for Vienna sausages. Oh yeah. That I guess it? they're not airing. Oh um, no. You were yeah, so excited about that. It was with the jackass guys and, yeah. um, and it's a tight close up on a bunch of Vienna sausages and then it pulls out. Uh, and it's, it's all of our dicks in, uh, in a can. And we say, uh, don't eat this. And then we all have a can of Vienna sausages in our hand. We say, eat this. Um, yeah. And apparently they didn't approve that copy or that uh, promotion. That was something I just directed on myself. And now I'm out, you know, $150,000 because I had to pay those jackass guys. I had to pay for the equipment and the crew. And now the Super Bowl, is, they rejected it. Yeah. Oh, that is. And, and, and no one was hard. I mean, that was the thing that was to me, which was really upsetting uh that is so hard paul i'm just texting molly something right now uh i'm in now molly i'm um, sorry this is a different i'm doing a different transaction uh molly wanted to know if i wanted to buy a bunch of cocaine for well i mean and day. molly by the way our super producer molly is out there by the way you know i want to talk about valentine's day but i also rob before we bring on our first guest i do want to just mention that you do have a brand new show that came out today Oh, right. it's I mean, not my show. It's not my show. I should clarify. Yeah, and 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 we can we can talk I mean, about let's that later. Talk about it. Let's yeah, just, I, mean, like, I just have. Yeah. I I did one episode of the show with the great uh, Marshawn Lynch, who is so funny. Wait, but and, tell uh, everybody what this is. Like Murderville is a brand new show on Netflix. Murderville, that... Murderville is a new show on Netflix that just started today. It's a comedy uh, murder mystery show where uh, Will Arnett plays a detective. And every episode, he has a. Oh no, I got some feedback in my ears of uh, this other window. I think. Um, so uh, now it's better. So Will is a detective that is solving murders with a new guest host every episode. And you got Conan so, O'Brien. You got uh, Sharon Stone. Kumail. Kumail. Yeah. Uh, Marshawn. 
Ken Jong. Um, Ken Jong. Yeah. And then I'm forgetting. But anyway, it's not my show, Paul. But it's you Will's are show. in one. I am, yes, yes. I am a murder suspect in an episode. And I had a total blast. And, and uh, so far, it just came out today on Netflix. And so far, um, the internet gods are smiling upon it. So that's really great. It got there's, a lot of great reviews. I mean, and- yeah, there, there's some controversy. Um, there was a big um, snafu that we'll, we'll get into it later because I feel like Steve right, is coming. Right. Steve is coming on, but all right, great. But, but but let's make a note to ourselves because we dicked around. We'll come back <laughs> to talking about. Uh, we this. literally had we literally had a ton of bits at the top of the show that we just <laughs> every one of them. It, it, that's all right because we do want to read our Oscar jokes too. Last week we yes. had. Uh, uh, oh, Lake doesn't need to be here yet. Uh, well, Lake, no, Lake, no, she's just gonna, she's getting prepped. She knows oh, gotcha. that she's gonna, okay. she knows her time. So, so, so last week we read some Oscar. There's a big movement on the internet for Paul and I to host the Oscars. What uh-huh. happened? Probably, honestly, yeah, it's probably gonna happen because the internet keeps writing us great comedy jokes and we keep exactly doing it on this show. So keep sending in your jokes. Uh, Paul and I will do them here. And we live. don't read these. We, we don't, don't read, read them before. Jokes. We don't read them. We just say it. So hopefully it's not racist. Do you want to sexist. try one right now? Yeah, like we're going to try one right now. Let's do, let's, do this one? Is, okay. Yeah, let's do one. This is submit on the Discord. And we are getting closer and closer to you writing an entire show for us. Uh, that's yeah. what we want you that's to do. That's the future. The future is the audience is the AI of the yes. show. So we get don't on the anything. Discord. Get on the yeah. Discord. You can start submitting ideas for bits. And this is... Uh, Rob and I reading your jokes. We have never read these jokes before. We don't know what these jokes are. We're going to do our best to give your jokes the best, uh, the best sell that we can do. I mean, here we look, go. if, if we get offered it, you're, we're taking you with us. Here we go, Rob. Go yeah, ahead. Here we go. Paul and I are on stage at the Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. I bring up my phone. Boy, this year is really flying by, isn't it, Paul? On February 2nd, many people celebrated Groundhog's Day, an annual event in which Punxsutawney Phil pokes his head out of a, out of the ground out of a hole in the ground and if he sees his shadow we predict six more weeks of winter <laughs> that's right rob and on uh, february 3rd others celebrated the less popular uh sweat hog day that's the annual event in which john travolta pokes his head out of a hole in the ground and then if he can pronounce uh edina menzel's name uh she wins an oscar Oh, well, that's a great seven-year-old slam, Paul. Well, you got it, Rob. <laughs> there By you the go. Way, I like I mean, that. That was a solid joke. Solid. I, I think that we're going to be, I, I think that Groundhog Day jokes during yeah. the Oscars might feel a little bit, a little stale. Well, they were close. I think they wrote the joke for this show. Oh, okay, got it. This show, but, but they're showing that they can write a joke. Which I was, love that joke. That was a yeah. great, uh, a solid joke. Want do you want to do, we'll do one more and then we'll go to Steve. All right. Uh, do we need to set up Steve anymore? I mean, well, we'll I mean, everybody him knows then, him. Okay, we'll great. Give him a good, we'll give him a good introduction, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, <clears throat> here's the other joke that uh, we're going to do. Joke two of the Academy Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome back your Academy Awards host. Hold on a second. I'll do it like this. Hold on. Yeah, do it. Do it right. It's not working. It's not working. Well, you have to point that into your mic, I think. No, this is plugged in. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your Academy Award show hosts, Paul Shear and Rob Hubel. Now we're back. Hello, hello, everyone. Paul, it's no secret that viewership for the Academy Awards is down. Well, what do you suggest? We got to make it more erotic, just like those Golden Globes. Who wouldn't want to win a set of those wonderful golden titties? Well, Rob, I I actually don't think that that's what a Golden Globe looks like. Put a dick on the Oscar, Paul. I mean, you so know, a little blue, a little blue, but you know, maybe a little blue. Little, yeah. I don't know if I, I don't, I'm not sure which network is airing the Oscars and if they would allow that, but maybe we bleep it. Maybe we do it and we bleep I, it. Maybe- I don't know. I, I feel like that one was kind of like off color. You know, this is the Academy Awards. We want to make sure that we are presenting, uh, you know, the best foot forward. We don't want to be slamming the Golden Globes. We don't want to say those words. 
uh, okay. put a well, dick we, on we got, it. We, 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 have, we have a couple yeah. more. And well, we, before, yeah, we can come back before, to that, right? Before, just for my, my brain, before we bring Steve on, the great Steve Ag from Peacemaker, um, what else do we, we, we need to handle tonight? We need to handle more Oscar jokes. We need to handle... Uh, we'll uh, talk about Murderville a little bit. The controversy. We need to talk about a very big mystery that's going on with Michael Rappaport. That was uh, Rappaport. Yes. Michael Rappaport mystery. We got some cameos. We got a lot of stuff. We got a lot cameos. of stuff coming okay, up. Great. You know, we got okay. we got uh, we got and uh, yeah, we have a bunch of stuff. But our first guest, he is a returning <laughs> guest to the show. You know him from the Sarah Silverman program. You know him from the hit film Suicide Squad, and now the hit TV show The Peacemaker. Please welcome. Actor, comedian, Steve Ag, yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. We're really doing it. We're doing it, man. Look How are this. you, you buddy? Look great. You look fantastic. Dreaming for my self tapes that I thought I'd use for this special <laughs> event. Yeah, you don't need to self tape anything. I think your mic might be not turned on. This mic, your big this one. mic. Oh, there, it now yeah. it's working. Now it's working. Okay, cool. How are the self tapes going? Because I've booked I was nothing. Telling, I I, <laughs> I have put myself on so many self tapes. I've never gotten any of them, and Me uh, and yeah. oftentimes I fall into this weird category. I don't know if you fall into this category where it's like, okay, he's a Dutch man who has just come over to the states, so you have to do a perfect Dutch accent and play the bass guitar, and you have to do it by tomorrow morning. Can you do that four page scene? Like I feel like I'm always given a <laughs> like. Four, I got two impossible auditions. One was a Dutch man, and I had to have a perfect Dutch accent, and then the other one was an actor in the John Wick movies, and I was the I was supposed to be playing the younger version of him, which I look nothing like, and hmm. the note was familiarize yourself with this actor's body of work and the note <laughs> was please send this to us by tomorrow wow what did i'm assuming for your dutch accent you just watched austin powers gold member and did an impression <laughs> of his father and, that... <laughs> and then i and i did get it they said well it's the best one you know as the best uh like uh like vo vocal tape i could hear uh, but yeah, no, I get like very odd ones. And now I've just, I'm like, what, what are you, what are you going to do? I, I don't have a Dutch accent. Well, for I, people, well, for, for people that don't know what we're talking about, this is auditions, you know, used to be in person where you would go to a casting director yeah. and you would memorize your lines and go in the room and the director and everybody would be there. Now you do it and it looks exactly like what you're looking at right now. It looks this yep. shitty. And people, someone's getting cast, but I have not, I, I haven't gotten anything off a of self tape. My screen has completely disappeared. Oh, you no. are, well, you we, are we can right, see you, you and we can hear okay. you. So yeah, don't worry about it. Right. And we're just making, uh, we're just making funny faces at you the whole time. Oh, well, but that's no good. Well, Steve, first of all, congratulations, congratulations on the peacemaker. I know everybody is, uh, what is it like to be? uh super famous all of a sudden like all of a sudden you are i would say like if you went to comic-con right now what what would that even be like we we caught you the week the last time you were in the show we caught you the week that you moved back to la oh, you had wow, just yeah. i think finished shooting the show but the movie had not come out yet uh, oh, suicide wow, squad yeah. And it was right on this cusp. Everyone was super excited about it. The movie comes out. People go nuts about it. And then the TV show goes out. And I feel like the, I, I'm just going to say, I think that the TV show seems more popular than even the movie. Like, I think people like it just, or that's at least uh, my impression of it. it yeah, they're it, both super popular. People weren't really going to the theaters because Delta was at its height at that point. And, mm. you know, Peacemaker's streaming. So people are already at home and it's doing like really well. And I feel like the best part about it is like, you know, James Gunn wrote or wrote all the episodes. I don't know if he directed all the episodes, right? No, he directed uh, five out of the eight. But you guys really get around it and surround it. Like there's all these like watch parties. I feel like there's a fun vibe around this show that I've not seen around the TV show forever. Like there's Spotify playlists. There's yeah. like fun uh, DC covers. It just feels like it's been a blast to, to see you all like. It seems like you genuinely all like each other and it was like a fun experience. Yeah, it was it was amazing. I mean, it came at a time where 
I wasn't doing anything because we were just finishing up the first year of the pandemic. So I was like not going out. And then James hadn't even told me that he was writing this. And he said he didn't want to, you know, get my hopes up just in case. So by the time he had told me it was already like in production and he told me in October of 2020 and we, I was in Vancouver by December. Whoa. Um, and we shot for seven months and it was much needed after, you know, eight months of, you know, sitting in an empty house. <laughs> <laughs> so now do you just, um, Steve, it's Rob. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, screen. hey, Rob. Um, no, I, hey. I have my screen back now. I can <laughs> okay, see Okay, great. Um, big fan. Um, do you now that you are hyper famous, is it like, um, like, do you have, what kind of car do you have? Do oh, you yeah, have like a question. fancy car or yeah. like a speedboat or like, what do, I what do people really, do? I have a really nice 2009 Ford F-150 pickup that I bought used at CarMax. Okay. Oh, I love Carmax. It's great. I well, just Paul, paid it off. Paul, you're talking about the lip balm. Paul, you're talking yeah. about the lip balm. Carmax. Yeah, yeah. That's Carmax. Yeah, yeah Steve's oh. talking about uh, the website uh, Carmax. Uh, yeah, I, get these, I, I think. Get yeah, I, yes, I get that. Yeah, I that. You're right, Rob. Yeah. Okay. okay. I like okay, Carmax so, too. So no, no huge, uh, crazy expenditures so far. Are you thinking about? You know, like what's what like are you gonna start a like a vanity band or like um I'm gonna start I think a a smart drink. Oh <laughs> that's a great idea. Yeah that's a great idea. Like an energy drink. But there that's is an drink. energy drink that is being nav like advertised to me on Instagram that I can't quite figure out what the what the the gimmick is but it's yeah. like it's like it's better than coffee it gives you tons of energy but it also helps you wake up but you're gonna want to go to sleep too like it's like it it basically is like this drink <laughs> yeah. is a life force that i can't i like i don't know how they got there's a lot money. of there's a lot of that there's like that mud there's one called like mud where it's like people oh, always it. ask me it's like what what i don't but yeah, that's a good call. You need to get in on some sort of beverage, like some people kind like of beverage. People like to hydrate now, I think, more yeah. than ever. <laughs> people will, you got people will swallow. They'll swallow a lot of different things. That's what. Yeah, and they'll what, be they'll be different flavors. So, you know. Yeah. I, th like, I what, think people I'm trying will to go think crazy of like, for I, it. I'm trying to think of like some different flavors for drinks. Like, uh, you know, I guess there's like, um, you know, Powerberry and like, uh, you know, Fun funs fun fun ripe i i, I don't know it's hard fun for me ripe. to I, can yeah. i use that you can use fun ripe fun for ripe sure. is good yeah fun ripe it sounds like that sounds fun to me i mean it it, it sounds fun but it also sounds fresh fresh and fun is what i like uh by the way ag i i want to like uh you know i think if you do do this would you be the face of it or would you just be like uh a, like would you be more like the gen ann where you kind of do some ads or would you stay relatively behind the scenes would you find mm. somebody different to kind of get in front i of would add, i i i'm thinking of asking john cena if he'd be the the face of <laughs> better By the way, idea better I, idea I, I will i'm not surprised but like i thought that john cena was incredibly funny in blockers and every time yeah. i see him i'm like oh he's really good and yeah. but in this series, he's really, really funny. And last week, there was this moment that I think I kind of went viral, I guess, in the sense that you revealed that this moment in the show was completely improvised by Cena. I want to play a clip of it just because yeah. it is, uh, just so you get an idea of it. I, I, Wait, um, this is like a real show. We're playing clips? <laughs> well, I mean, this is, yeah, we're, we're really, I mean, this is oh it. We've upgraded God. our, this is, we've upgraded it here. Oh, right? so, shit. Look at this. So Look real. This. Look at this. Right off YouTube. Uh oh, we don't have any sound, Paul. Oh, you don't have no sound. Hold on. Oh, hold on. That's this is where it's not a real show. Let me yeah, see. We'll, that. Edit, we'll, we'll edit that part well, out, yeah. Steve. Hold so on. basically, no, just uh, to set it up is like you. Had, oh, hold on. I gotta, I gotta get this into the right position. Uh, you. Oh boy, oh boy. This is what happens. I'm, I'm dragging my mouse around and I'm having all these issues. Hold on now. Wait, Steve, who are you writing? Are you writing uh, Lake Bell? Oh yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> she asked in the in your. 
in your uh, chat area <laughs> over chat. here if they're oh, if you're no. showing a clip from Pam and Tommy and I said you guys are showing the actual original sex tape. No, we're oh, not. Oh. We are. We are. We are going to hear. Let me. I'm going to stop this. Oh, right here. I'm well, that's a good this. question. Do we have a clip? This is when we're we not a, a real show. No, we have. We have. A, we don't have a clip um, for everything. But this I thought was interesting just because. So basically, you make you make John Cena mad, and I think let's make sure this works. You make John Cena mad. You did I something. Frame I frame his dad. Say, you frame his dad, and he's like, "Who could it? Who else could it have been?" And, I couldn't think of anybody else. What about Ariana Grande or Drake? What? Brad Pitt or Payne Stewart or Doug the Pug, Khloe Kardashian, the Red Tiger from Voltron, Tinky Winky, Mariska Hargitay, Mario, Super Mario. Fucking Luigi, Yoshi, <laughs> Bert, Ernie, Grover, Snuffle Up Against, Burger King, Grimace, Ronald McDonald, the two old guys from the balcony and the Muppets, Fran Tarkenton, Joe Montana, Joe Montana, Eddie Murphy, <laughs> Michael Jordan, Michael D. Jordan, BTS, Eugene Levy, fuck you, John Lovitz, shut the fuck up and listen, man, I'm giving you a list of people you could have done, Danny DeVito, Andy Kaufman, Jim Morrison, <laughs> any one of the fucking Beatles, Pete Best, George Carlin, dead. Danny Glover, Mel Gibson, Ice T, Ice Cube, Vanilla Ice, Elvis fucking Presley, Priscilla <laughs> Presley, Seth Meyers. What about Seth Meyers? Or for that matter, Jay Leno. Conan's not really doing much right now. Will Ferrell. <laughs> and it goes on and on for like, it's for two minutes. Yeah. Like he improvises like 80 names. And that yeah. was completely just, imp I mean, that really well, so, made I mean, me to, laugh. To, to back up your point paul like i do think that it's really cool and like exciting when you see someone that's like you know he's not a comedian like he's a pro i mean he comes from the world of pro wrestling it doesn't mean that he's that's all he does but like i thought blockers was super funny but like yeah. watching him in this is also like you know in the show you get to spend time with these people and get to spend time with these characters and really sort of like learn to like them and hang out with them and i think it's really fun to watch someone like that kind of like do something that they're really good at that they haven't been able to show yet so yeah james wanted to give him an arc too because in the suicide squad movie he he's one of the few characters throughout the movie that is just like he starts off an asshole and at the end of the movie he's still an asshole we don't know why and so james wanted to give him you know a an actual series where we see why he's an asshole and uh and it really pays off by the way i mean yeah I, uh the the kind of i don't want to spoil it for people who have not been watching but the reveals are dark and yeah. they are good and like yeah. incredibly satisfying but it's also uh but i think the thing i was saying to a friend was that that what i really love about the show is you can have these like long dialogue scenes i just haven't seen like it feels like sometimes you can go on for like two or three minutes. It's like having like a two person scene, which just yeah. feels so much more alive than what I've been seeing. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just like so many close cuts and, and quick little moments. It's really fun to watch. Yeah. J James loves to do scenes where it's like two people, they're, they're going to get, you know, fight this enemy. And then someone mentions, you know, a TV show he saw last night. And then there, there'll be like two or three minutes of the, them arguing about whether or not this is a good show. And it's like, for no reason other than, you know, maybe a little character development as to yeah. how insane these people are. Um, so we wanted to play a game with you because you are now in the, the DC universe. Yeah. You are now, you know, you are, uh, but you know, and, and I would say the Peacemaker is a character, an obscure character in the DC universe. Oh, most of the characters in Suicide Squad were obscure characters, yeah. but we wanted to kind of test your knowledge on obscure characters. I don't know if you've gotten deep in it. it these are going to probably be hard, but we wanted just to kind of show you maybe some potential guest stars for season two. Hopefully we'll get a season two for Peacemaker. Okay. I say we, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I wanted to show you some of these. So let's uh, take a look at this. So, um, this now, one Steve, I thought, we, yeah. Steve, before we even get into this, are you a DC Universe nerd? Like, are He's you, is this going to be easy? No, this is going to be very difficult unless okay. it's like Superman or Batman or. Okay. <laughs> so you didn't feel hard. like you didn't feel like you needed to go in deep to the, the DC world. You just jumped in and, and I, you just got. Yeah, I leave that up. I leave that up to James. All right. Okay. So this is, this is a character I thought you might have a little bit of a connection with or uh, a fun character here. If you take a look at him. Uh, anything that jumps out at you of what this character might be called? 
I would say maybe Leopard Man. It looks like he's got some that's a, oh, that's a good spots. guess. Yes. Now, uh, I, yeah. I don't know anything about comic books either, so I'm as bad as you are. I do see that he has ha, 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 ha all over him. And oh, it, that's ha, ha. It looks like he's got like a, you know, a fairly, fairly decent groin size. Well, I think they all have that. Right? I mean, is I mean, it like, uh, is it like uh, funny, funny dick? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it don't is know. not, it is not, it's not the leopard. It's not the funny dick. It is the heckler. The heckler. Uh. Uh, had a six issue run and uh, the heckler is Stu Mosley, the co-owner of Eats, uh, a Skid Row diner uh, in Delta City. And uh, he fights crime with sarcastic wit and a brightly colored costume. So this is wow. sheer. That is heckler. a deep cut. <laughs> Diners I mean, go that... over well on Skid Row. No, <laughs> nothing the homeless love more than bacon and eggs. <laughs> um, here is uh, another, another. I like that he fights crime with his wit. Uh, yeah. But yeah. also a heckler isn't always the most witty. They're the most annoying. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it, the stand-up comic might be better. All right. This, uh, this character right here, any, any idea? He's a, you know, Oh. Suit and tie. Uh, I mean, he looks very much like Dick Tracy, but yes, that also looks like a ranger's hat, like the yes. dents in the front. Yeah, like a hat, park yeah. ranger. And so which, I'll say those? Dick Ranger. Okay, Dick Ranger. Dick Ranger. Yeah. Rob, do you want to throw one in here? Um, I am noticing a lot of candles, and uh, he does look like a detective. I would say like um, seance guy. Is it seance guy? <laughs> By the way, both of you pretty close. It's Dr. Occult. Dr. Ooh. Occult is a private detective who specializes only in the supernatural cases. So it's like a film noir detective. So go, I guess ghosts come to him. And, why isn't uh, that? Why hasn't? Who who owns DC? Is it Warner Brothers? Like, why haven't they made yeah. that movie? That seems like I'm a saying, great. This is I'm giving Steve and James some ideas for the season two of Peacemaker. This is okay. these are good. Okay. These are good characters. Yeah. Um, right. All right. This one is. Uh, all right. I wanna I wanna find a good one here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's jump to this one. Uh, these guys. Ooh. Oh. Oh, well, they're well. Batman, I see, They've and then, got a wait, Juggalo yeah. vibe in that. Wait, they were photo. they were they were attached. They were they were identical. Uh, th sorry, they were Siamese twins, yeah. and now they're yes. separated. One's got a hammer. One's got a scythe, or, or a sickle, sickle, if you will. A sickle. sickle. Yeah. Um, they look like Joker's henchmen. Like the one guy looks like he has the. You guys Joker are doing really chest. good. You guys are doing really yeah. really good here. Uh, Steve, what do you think? Um, uh, I just say th the juggalo jo fuck Joker's jo henchman. Joker's I like it. I, I, Joker's I, I, henchman. Again, you guys are close. Uh, it, this is a tough one. You're never gonna get this name. It's the uh, Abramovich. Can I, can I... Yeah, the Abramovich uh, twins and the Abramovich uh, twins uh, are a pair of twins that fight with a hammer and a sickle. So you guys were right about that. They yeah. are the Joker's henchmen. But here's the interesting thing about these uh, these bros is that the Joker met these uh conjoined twins and he was like you know what um let's separate you two i think you guys would be more effective uh if we just like if we cut you in half so uh he that's cut a terrible them idea yeah. that's a terrible idea why not leave <laughs> yeah, them that's together awful. um uh this all right, i got another one here for you guys uh this is a good this is a good one i think this is one is gonna work i got uh, two more in here i think all right this one right here this is a character that's appeared a lot uh, oh. You see different ages. Uh, there's even some lettering on his hat to help you understand uh, what he does. He's a taxi driver, obviously. I'd uh, say I'd say his name's probably Cabby. Ooh, that's a great one. Green, yeah, green Cabby. Let's look at his dick <laughs> size. I usually go by their dick size. All right. Well, again, size. please, yeah. I'll say I'll say tiny tiny dick Cabby. Tiny dick Cabby. <laughs> All right, you guys are very close. Again, very close. Steve, I think you got closer. It's Space oh. Cabby. Space Cabby Space is a driver for hire in the 22nd century. Uh, he works wow. for a nine planet taxi. And uh, he basically is, Wait, is a, this a kid. Sure. Is this a kid's character? Um, I think he has appeared in DC Kids, but he okay. was originated here uh, in 1954. As okay. an adult, I, I just uh, you know I want to apologize to all the kids watching. We have a huge kid fan, giant, uh, giant kid audience here. <laughs> and, Always uh, a giant yeah, kid audience. Uh, yeah, sorry, Twitch. 
Yeah. And uh, and finally, we'll end on a villain. And here's a villain. Anyone understand what this villain is? Oh, uh, Rob's going to like this one because he's doing shit <laughs> well, yeah. out of his dick. <laughs> Wait, I mean, that's not what I like. All right. Uh, he, he is hitting someone in the face with a boxing glove coming out of his wiener. Yes. And the little guy's team. coming out of his wiener, too. That oh, is, right. Uh, yeah. That yeah. looks very, uh, very like, you know, beginning of birth, the, wow. the, the explosion of sperm out of there. Wow. And uh, the dialogue there, if you can't read it, is you finished. Is that your best shot? Guess what? Mummies. I'm just starting. Mm. I'm going to say Alibaba and the 40 sperm. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to say Sploder. Ooh, uh, again, good guess. It is a simply codpiece. Oh, cod shit. Piece. <laughs> it's so obvious. Sure. How cod did you even find these? Like, yeah. did you, like, are you, I don't, I wouldn't even know where to look for Our that. amazing research team of me with a different hat on and Molly, our super producer, oh, uh, we, super we go producer. deep. We go, yeah, we go deep into the, All into right. the worlds to find the best characters. Steve, uh, are, are people know. making, well, you're probably walking around with a mask most of the time, but yep. when you take your mask off, do people go, are people yelling like die beard and all that stuff? Like, are, are they, is it? I, I don't generally in, in public, I'm, I'm for the most part, don't go out much at all, but uh, yeah. I usually am always wearing a mask. I did go to a doctor's appointment yesterday and I was sitting in the examining room and the doctor came in and the first thing out of her mouth was, hey, dye beard. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, that, that was a shocker. To... Oh, you got to switch doctors, man. Yeah. You by got the way, <laughs> By the way, uh, Steve, I, I, I'm just realizing that I thought your character was uh, a new invention. But your character yeah. is not this, your character. This is just so uh, everyone can see. This is this is your uh, this is your character right there. That is you. Uh, That's John Economist, who, by yeah. the way, is you know John Ostrander is a, a comic creator writer. Uh, he created the Suicide Squad, and he came to set when we were shooting, and James introduced us, and he said, "Oh, he's like, yeah, you look great." He goes, "You look like the actual John Economist that I based him on." Oh, whoa. Amazing. Amazing. Was like a, a business partner or a business friend or something like that. I mean, That's... you do you do look the part. I mean, is that has there been any I mean, besides your doctor calling you die beard, have you had any weird fan interactions with people found you? I know that like there are I'm on a Star Trek show, uh, this lower deck show, and I get the craziest fan mail and I only am like a side character that's on a handful of episodes. Yeah. The amount of fan mail I get from a Star Trek audience, which I love, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, is confounding yeah. to me. I, 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 so I must imagine it's like tenfold for you. Yeah, Instagram, it's pretty, the, the, num, the, the insane fan art that's, go, that's going up is, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty, it, I'm not used to this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, last thing, Steve, because I know you probably got to catch your limo and go to like a helicopter party or something. Uh -huh. But um, Catalina wine mixer, motherfucker. Gotta get there. <laughs> gotta get there. Do you, we were talking about um, Valentine's Day before uh, you came on? And um, well, do you yeah, have I saw your sex whip? Yeah. Do you have? Well, it's not a sex whip. It's it's a cell. It's a lethal self defense apples uh, and oranges. Whip. Um, weapon. Yeah, that. Thank but, you. Uh, thank you're, you. You know, you whip people with it. But anyway, do you have any any uh, Valentine's tips for you know young people that are trying to meet someone? They're coming out of the pandemic, or they're because Paul and I were talking about how like you know maybe hopefully standards have lowered a little bit, so it may be a good opportunity for people to sort of say, "Look, I'm not in the best shape of my life." you know, I haven't worked in a while, um, you know, because of the pandemic or whatever, but, you know, maybe we could form some sort of connection here. Like, do, do you, um, well, do you guys, I, I, we're all a, a roughly the age where we, we remember happy days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. There, there was an episode where I believe it was Fonzie was teaching, I think Richie, how to pick up girls in a supermarket. Oh, and one of the ways was he would just ram a woman's cart with his cart 
and then just start talking to her. Oh, <laughs> that's Supermarkets a are always going to be around. I, I mean, I know Instacart's kind of put a little bit of a, a kibosh on that, but I, I think as Omicron's going away, just in time for thanks or Thanksgiving for thanks Valentine's Day, um, I think that might be a, a good way to try an original. You know, that's, that's I like not this. something millennials are very aware of. I'm going to plug uh, something that my wife did, which I thought was actually really interesting. She has a podcast called The Deep Dive, and her and Jessica St. Clair brought on. Is, it, is this whole show a, a thing to promote June's podcast? By the she way, I tried cash. I tried calling June a few times today. She's not answering her phone. Uh, she's alive. Uh, well, I didn't ask how do we, how do text we know? Her, she, text her right now, and I'll make sure she texts you back. How do we Just know text her right now. Yeah, she, she is her. alive? Here, I'll text. Uh, uh, yeah. June, text Steve. Okay, she's texting me uh, back right now. No, that doesn't sound legit. Yeah. Yeah. It, she she just wrote hi. Yeah, that proves it. So I'm so sorry, Steve, but we're running out of time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the the uh, on deep dive though, she did a thing that I thought was so funny. Uh, Jessica St. Clair, her co-host on the show, and Casey uh, Wilson, who you know from uh, Happy Endings yeah. and Black Money, uh, they both consider themselves the uh, the queens of small talk. And they do a whole lesson on how to have casual <laughs> conversations at farmer mar- at the farmer's market, at supermarkets. That's amazing. And it's about, yeah, so you can really learn. And then they test June because June's very bad at it. So if you are looking on how to ram your Wait, car, is, is this is this for is this for I mean in a in a in a it's just heterosexual. About small- it's it just for, about small just talk. In it's, general, for anyone to make small talk, okay. Anyone to make small talk. It doesn't, it doesn't have to lead to anything more than that. It, as a matter of fact, I think Casey and Jessica would say that they don't want it to lead to anything. But it does give you that chance to have a connection, make a little bond, and then go away. You know, look, it's 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 a it's a it's a you know tool that needs to be sharpened. I think. By, by the way, talk. Lake is saying in the chat, uh, "Don't ram your cart into people." I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. She must not yeah. watch Happy Days. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she realizes what the current trends are out there. I mean, the the ramming the cart is very current. You guys like, have all worked with Henry Winkler many times. We got to yeah. ask him about it. We got to we'll bring him on the him. show and, and, and make sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know what? We'll have Lake rebut, a, we rebut this uh, right now, but we'll say goodbye to you, Steve. A pleasure to see you. Steve, Watch always, Peacemaker. always uh, a pleasure, buddy. Yeah. Uh, are HBO you ever going to, are you doing stand up or no? eventually i mean it's been two years i'm yeah. i'm terrified of the thought yeah. of, but yeah yeah i will, will you be text yeah. me i i, I want to be there when you do stand up wow that seems like a threat <laughs> it seems like a real it almost seems like he's he's daring you not i'm to gonna be f- i'm gonna be the heckler <laughs> yeah uh, uh no right. but i mean you know he used to come on our, our on yeah. crash test all the time yeah that was is essentially show. this this is yeah. essentially crash test yeah. uh okay buddy thanks steve all right see you later good to see you buddy <laughs> oh paul paul that was, dropped, Molly. that was you, that was that was Molly. Drop people too quickly. That, uh, you know you what? People too quickly. Paul. We, you know what? Uh, it's called the Irish goodbye. You got to get in. You got to get out. Boom, um, boom, boom. Steve is the best. And uh, someone in the comments said, "What is this? A an ad for Peacemaker?" I mean, well, we're talking about no, our friend is on the I know, TV I'm show. Trying, I know. I'm trying to address this. It's like not really. We're just lucky that like eventually we all. <laughs> Like people started working and doing cool things, and now we like to talk, talk about, about those cool things. Yeah. We're not like but, we're not. We wasn't uh, an ad yeah. for peace, man. Come on, now that's yeah. one right. angry person. Right. Uh, right. By the go. way, it's also awesome. Our do you want to do? You, do you yeah. wait? No, is Lake on now? She's on. Like I think we should bring her on. We don't keep her waiting. Uh, we keep her. Okay. Yeah, we bring I thought, her on. We okay. always, right. You know, I don't want right. to like because well, we got her there. I mean. Yeah. Uh, well, wait. Should we? Should we ask her if she wants to come on now, or maybe she's pooping? We don't know. All right. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Does she want? Yeah. I mean, if okay. she wants, yeah, she's okay. ready, right? She's ready. I'm sure she's okay, ready. Our next guest is uh, an actress, a screenwriter, a director. Uh, she has been in. Uh, well, don't don't put the Vienna sausages up there. It's I a mean, new thing, Paul. I make money when you introduce people. I make money by okay. um, featuring a product. All right. Well, you know, you know her from How to Make It in America, Children's Hospital, uh, Bless This Mess. 
you also know her uh, as a uh, award-winning director uh, big time. at Big Time. Big time. Uh, she uh, she had her debut called In a World. She also uh, directed, wrote, and co-produced uh, I Do Until I Don't. And she right now is the voice of the Black Widow in the Disney Plus series What If. And on top of all that, directed a handful of these episodes of the brand new Hulu show, Hammy and Tommy. Please welcome Lake Bell. Yes. 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 You're doing it. We are doing it. And you guys, we did it. We Lake, did it. You, say, you say do not jam uh, your cart into another person's cart at the supermarket. That's not a good way to meet someone. It, from, from a sexual perspective, no. Okay. I don't think sexually that will go anywhere. I think it'll be like, cool your jets. Got really? If a, if, a, if a handsome stranger of okay. any drove their shopping cart into your shopping cart you instantly would be opposed to that i just yeah i feel it's a little aggressive i mean are we okay. talking like a a little like a little like bumper bumper kiss cart well, what if it's like but I, but what if it's a very handsome what if it's like john ham and he he oh. he rams his his shopping right. cart into yours and then has like a very smooth sort of like sexy like oh okay I, you know i'm sorry yeah. oh uh look what sure. look at look at what we got here we got ourselves a vegan exactly. over here or whatever uh, yeah. you know yeah yeah no it still doesn't work okay all right I, I, you know what i appreciate that because somebody in the chat is saying it means that the handsome stranger is probably like a psychopath like if you're yeah, you. yeah yeah it feels like right? like i think women already are like hey hang on Quick tech thing. Are you seeing everything okay? Because it feels real glitchy on my side. We see um, you perfectly. We okay, see you are moving great. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I I think I agree with this uh chat stranger. Um, because I do Let's think that it comes off a little like aggressive. And I think women already are just like, I just want to buy my cauliflower and like, you know, find the gluten-free pasta and like not right. you're not in you're not you're not going to the supermarket to get picked up. I mean, I, don't I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, like, but I, but I think that people do assume, uh, and I'm not one of these people that like it's fun to be aggressive. I I will say that there are uh, and and like in the way that they approach you, like I will whoa, say even whoa, like whoa 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 no, whoa. I will say that oh. there. I, I think that they're, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Yeah, fun oh. to be aggressive. Like, oh. well, I will say that like sometimes people, somebody might recognize me on the street, and I would say ninety eight percent of those people are incredibly lovely. And then there's one person who I feel like they're like, I'm going to go in here in oh, okay. such a way that will be like, you're going to be like, Whoa. And then maybe well, but, we'll but have more of a connection. It's like, it's not aggressive. Like it's just sort of like, I'm going to put you on your heels a little bit. I'm not, but, I'm but not going to be nice. You are talking about fan interactions. That's a, yeah, that's a, a okay. fan approach versus like, I actually think you're cute. I don't know what else to do. We're, we're in the vitamin section at sprouts. Right. And I want to, you know, I want to, I want to do a, a contemporary wink at you without actually winking. Cause that would be, right. so, so right. the Steve AG version of it is a little, is a, is, is a jamming of a card into another yeah. card. And I'm going to say, I mean, I, I a little dated, it's a little dated. How about if you're grabbing for uh, a vitamin in mm -hmm. uh, in sprouts oh, and then i and then i and then i and i and i grab oh, for it oh, at the where, yeah oh, where are you from because yeah, your where, accent, you, your you, accent. Just uh, you know i'm from uh, i'm from you know i'm from a good old merry uh merry old jolly uh, scott london so uh so you know uh it's right on the border of scotland london so um right by scotland yard uh excuse me but but if I, now is it weird if i grab like if i pre-plan a grab like so you're grabbing for something and i see you grabbing for it and I'm, oh oh we're both grabbing for the same uh vitamin you know what what do yeah, you think like, is that is that weird? Douche? like would you be grabbing for the same kind of like even if it was a feminine product no that yeah. would be odd that would be odd yeah, yeah. i think yeah. that maybe like any grabbing or jamming just should be avoided <laughs> when you're general. trying to do a girl when you're trying to <laughs> Like, here's what I'll look like. You're, you're at the grocery store and, you know, you're prepping for Valentine's Day and you don't have 
a special lady or dude yeah and you see someone cute and you know i think there's something meaningful in this day and age with a glance and like a connection of eyeballs because mm -hmm. that's all we got like you can't even see their whole face and i yeah. but i think that eyeballs are are pretty powerful i wow, i used okay. to do a thing i and this is when i you know now i'm happily married and um you know it's no big deal but big deal. i i i used to do a thing that uh, before the pandemic, I was always wearing a mask anyway. And I would go to the store and I would get a bunch of a, like a ton of fake blood in my mouth. And then when I would see someone that I wanted to meet, right. I would make all the blood shoot out of my mouth and my mask. Yeah. And, um, you know, honestly, it wasn't very successful. I did not meet anyone that way. Yeah, it's a pretty aggressive. Yeah, that is awesome. also aggressive, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how we met initially. Yeah, so that's how but we met. and and it yes. didn't work out obviously. But like, no. But yeah. that was we became friends after that because I you remember became I became friends. Hospital, and thank like, God, thank God, my wife took me on. You know. Well, I want. I do want to bring up this thing that somebody in the chat is talking about too, and I agree with this. People in masks do look better, but then we're also putting another level on this relationship, which is like the reveal, like first yeah. of all, you can put any clothes on and it can cover your body. And then when you get to that point of intimacy and you want to, you know, you got to show, you got to show, right. But yeah. a mask, you know, a mask is another thing. Like I, I worked with some people on black Monday. I don't, I don't know what they look like. And when I saw them yeah. without their mask, I, it took me a moment to even like accept You're them like, as the person. That you, yeah. yeah. I know. I know. That's a it, tricky it's, thing. It's complex. I mean, for kids too, because like babies, babies be confused right now. You know what I mean? If they yeah, were born, yeah. they'd be real confused. I want to say to all all the babies that are watching this show yeah. right now, little babies, I hear you. I hear you, babies. I know it's confusing. Babies, babies, it's conf babies. babies. don't be so babies. confused, babies. No, it is. It's a bizarre thing. Like uh, I have a I have a kid who's in. Uh, in preschool right now and yeah and it's i mean all, all my older kid too they just don't see anyone's face until they're in a pre-approved outdoor space but that's not at school and then the thing yeah it's, yeah it's a very bizarre I, I heard i heard another parent say that it was it might actually work out to be because i was lamenting that you know they will not have the ability to read facial expressions at all and this parent was like or will they be awesome at reading like this right. you know they'll just know like happy sad ashamed scared frightened joyful you know like whatever yeah. from just that little peep right there so you think that in a weird way this is actually we're we're building the perfect flirting person according to lake because this is oh, like no, it's all about the Paul, eyes Paul, and Paul, then the worst thing with these no i'm not saying the children i'm saying that and, 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 and I'm, I'm saying that uh, give them 15, uh, 16 years at that point, they're going to be so they're going to be working on a whole nother level. Like their eye work, they're going to be able to communicate more than we ever thought is what I'm saying. I, you know, it's like, I, mean, sometimes I feel like it's like, you know, like people with beards, you know, it's like, yeah. like, a, you know, the daddy with the beard. And then it's like the daddy shaves his beard and the baby's like, Ugh! you know, yes. it feels like we're all wearing proverbial beards. And yes. if, for these kids, it's like, yeah, you know, it's it's jarring. It's jarring yeah. to the whole human. But anyway, sorry, that was a side <laughs> Man, uh, that was some real talk right there. I mean, but we gotta we gotta get it out, you know. Uh, but the, you know, before Valentine's Day, we gotta get we gotta we gotta answer the yeah, question. No, we know that right. there's no grabbing, right. no slamming. It's more about the eyes. Um, Lake, I was excited to hear that you were directing uh, Pam and Tommy. You were you. You know, like we said, you've directed your own films. You've done this a lot, but this is—I'm fascinated with this story in general because it's this thing that happened when I was a kid that I think you understand one side of, or the way that it's kind of told. I think we've been seeing this with like the way that even the Britney Spears story is told, or the Monica Lewinsky yeah. story is told. Like we were fed like one version of it and it's so easy to kind of like make your own judgments about it and this show seems to be really like kind of like taking away some of the sensationalism of this this moment that happened like where basically uh you know uh tommy lee and pamela anderson 
had uh, a tape that they made of themselves that was not for any sort of public consumption that was like locked yeah, away in a safe. Yeah, stolen. That's what people forget. The the weird yeah. part of it, and I and sorry, like I haven't seen it yet, but like it. Uh, and when does it come out? Sorry, and so it, it came out. It came out yesterday. Yes, yeah, so okay. it's right there. Because and it's I, on Hulu, the first three episodes, and then um, the start of my episodes are next week. Gotcha. The uh, I will say that kudos to Hulu. Like those guys have been promoting the yeah. talk <laughs> out of it, which is awesome. But yeah. um, but yeah. it is so cool. We should show the trailer. Sheer. Actually, I have it all queued up. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then I'll, uh, I'll speak to kind of what you were saying, Paul. Out. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, let me make. Sure, I just want to make. Sure, I just want to make sure that I get the uh, the right sound on here. Hold on a second. Make sure I'm going to do it the right. Oh, oh, Molly's got it. Okay, great. Oh, Molly, Go for thank it. you. Will you please state your name for the record? Please welcome Pamela Anderson. Did you know anything at all about Mr. Lee before you met him? I knew he was the drummer for Motley Crue. Did you find him attractive? I liked his smile. I still do. We're so good together, Pamela. To everlasting love. We have recently come into possession of a piece of material. This is so private. It's like we're seeing something we're not supposed to be seeing. Nobody's ever getting rich off a of celebrity sex tape. What if we sold it someplace nobody could find us? A website. A what site? It's this thing on the computer. People will order the tape directly from us. Wow, you are so hot. What the hell is this? I won't do that. How many copies of this are out there? Could be dozens. Pirated copies are spreading up all over the web. You don't seem to understand what a big deal this is. I'm on that tape just the same as you. But this is worse for me. How is this worse for you? Everyone is beautiful and perfect. Is that how you feel? Like you have to please people? It's all I do. There it is. Uh, by the way, it looks it looks amazing yeah. too. I mean, was that fun uh, to just even recreate? Like, were you get? Did you get a chance to? Like, what was the most fun thing to recreate and kind of like recapturing the that '90s thing? Was it something? So- uh, so just to jump in so uh just so the viewers understand so the first three episodes are directed by none other than craig gillespie who is the master of itania um and i actually was in a film as an actor for him um million dollar arm and so we our relationship had started there and i knew the writers as well and so that's how i i kind of funneled into this process and now i out of the eight i did two of them number four and number seven so um the I think I felt really pulled to this story, uh, Real Talk, because um, not only was, yes, it's very elevated, it's, you know, the auspices are great, it's Annapurna, you know, it's like there's a beautiful quality of of people who are involved. But then additionally, you know, I had had, I felt that feeling that Pam has felt where I have had property stolen um, that was not private uh, property in the form of um, photographs. And yeah. so I remember reading the scripts and feeling immediately very protective. <laughs> and I think Lily and I both, um, the lady team, but as well as every single person who worked on this show were very, um, very, uh, they just made it their mission to to make sure that really this is a, um, this is a venture in sort of expressing all sides of the story so yes yeah. you're right people forget that it was literally stolen property because we yeah. are entrenched also in in a culture where people put these things out there in a way that's very intentional well this was the first um right. viral video right and i think it's also like one of these things where you forget that these are real people Right. right. And, and, you know, and it's like, and, and I think that we can kind of find ourselves in that all the time, which is just sort of like the sensationalist of, you know, you don't realize like these are people who are seeing things. I even read like something recently that like 
uh, Ben Affleck was talking about his relationship with J-Lo. And he was like, it's so hard to be in a relationship when everywhere you go, everyone is basically saying like, what the fuck is going on in that relationship? And you're on the cover of every kind of tabloid. You become like this fodder and you stop, like people don't treat you like a human being. Like you are literally just like, it's like a character, like a cartoon character. And I feel like that's, and you know, my whole interpretation of it wasn't like, oh, this, these people had something stolen from them. Like they literally took the safe out of their house. Like it wasn't like vulnerable. The, the yeah. situation there, the, and there's no, you know, there's something really sweet in the, in the depiction of sort of how Pam is looking at it, where she's like, there could be dozens of those out there. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. the naivete and the, you know, that we all had at that time, 1995, 96, you know, it's like, that was still where you're like, I have to go to the library to check my email. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Like yeah the yeah. internet wasn't like, you know, we didn't all have that in our house. So that's when we were in school and, you know, you're like, oh, I guess I got to go check my email or whatever. But you weren't ingesting every single thing piece of information in life and your health and how many steps are you taking and what's your blood pressure and you know what am I fucking you yeah. know pub to fucking Instagram to Wordle like it's everything you know for <laughs> yeah. us now but but it, it before it was just really it was like esoteric you know and yeah. so the idea it, it's there's no concept and so in series we don't like hammer that over the head to at nauseum but it's just it's just a reality. It, it's just it's crazy. It is crazy to remember like the context of it, because I think that most people probably think of that as like this sensationalized thing that got out there. But it was like, yeah, it was like a stolen. Yeah, it was the first viral video that was like stolen right at the like birth of the Internet. And yeah. Yeah. oh, it's crazy. And I, I also forgot, say I forgot like, about so much of that. Yeah. And not to yeah. like, you know, not to bring it all the way over here, but I will say that I think what I've realized too is this constant idea that like I think that Pam represented something that in people's minds that they sexualize. And so then they like it almost becomes like her fault or becomes like their like it becomes their fault. And that's something that is so interesting. I'm glad that we have like a story like this and a story like like I think we've seen it with these Monica, like the Monica Lindsay stuff, the the Britney Spears thing, where we get to basically finally see a much more balanced perspective and a human a human perspective, the humanity there. Because I think you know some things can just kind of fly through, and uh, and you don't ever, I think, take the people for yeah people's perspective. Yeah, you you don't you you take it for granted a little bit that they're putting themselves out there as a choice, right? So yeah. you have you have women on the cover of a magazine, which is just culturally kind of what we've you know we've that's yeah. what we've been doing you you know, and 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 it's arguably imbalanced, right? Right. <laughs> but, yeah. it, but I mean, I I will say that the same year that I I wrote directed starred in a movie, I was also on the cover of two magazines, Naked, and that's really interesting because my whole thing was just because you express your sexuality, your femininity, that doesn't negate your intellect or your ability mm -hmm. to, to create, right? right? It, they're, yes. they're not mutually exclusive. So, so you have this thing where Pam is, you know, she had been, uh, you know, sort of her, her, her body was weaponized against yeah. her right? because she spent her life uh, making money and posing, you know, in a bathing suit. It's like, it doesn't, it, it, that has nothing to do whether you can steal private property, something that you make. Of course, now we go, well, if you're going to take naked photos, you better, you better, you know, be comfortable right. that thing out there. And I'm like, I don't know. I feel like you can still take, you can express your sexuality. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, a, it's like the other thing is like, if it's for like, that's the, it's the weird thing. It's like it's private. Like you, like like you shouldn't be expecting everyone to steal. Like it's a, it's no, a very but, weird. No, line. but it's just yeah. a weird. It's a weird thing that you have someone that is in the business of being in a bathing suit, and right, then the right. other guy is a rock and roll guy who's like sure. so out there. So people just think like, oh well, fuck it. They would be like, you they're know, cool like, with it in a way. Yeah, it's cool, like they're yeah, cool with it, or right, they deserved right. it. Right. They shouldn't have done it. They deserved right. it. They're cool right. with it. And and, it, and there's a lot of specific things in there, you know, that I think became not comical, but like there are these things that like the people latched onto. And then it's like, oh, that became it becomes like the memification of something like we were talking about this. The uh, yeah, because right. it's like all of a sudden, like we all see that picture of like, um, you know, uh, Robert Redford and Jeremiah Johnson, where he's like, 
no one knows that fucking movie. Like everyone is using that, you know, that gif on Twitter. You know, it's like we start to like separate things from their actual meaning and it gets further and further away. But uh, yeah, so I think this is so interesting. And, and when you came in on episode four, yeah. story-wise, where were you at? Like, what did you get to do that was, besides telling the story, which I imagine well, was uh, I, incredibly fun, but I mean, or not fun, but uh, incredibly like empowering, but like what was like fun to do in it? I think that, you know, it's like the first three episodes, you're you're just going to get just this incredible dose of just like pop culture in its heyday, you know, poignant, but like sharp and like fun and um, kind of exhilarating. You're like, oh, this is I'm going to I'm going to fall in love with these people. <laughs> like yeah. I'm falling in love with the time. I'm feeling nostalgic. And, you know, these needle drop songs are making me feel things and parts of my body I haven't felt in a long time, you know. So it's like it's just kind of like unabashedly fun then. But 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 still, you know, you're you you feel the tension of something happening. And then in four, you next week you get to you. We start to go deeper into the humanity of these people, particularly Pam. And, and let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Um, I I've never worked with Nick Offerman, but. I hear <laughs> that he is a an asshole, which is okay. a show. Yeah. And what 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 was he like? Like, what is he like? Well, I got to set, and the first thing he did was jam a grocery cart right at me. Ah, uh, no, I said, not today. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. It's like when you go to prison, you have to find the biggest guy and punch him. When you go on set, you have to take a grocery cart and ram the director. My, that, other, that question, is, my other question Nick. is like, is is I I was in uh, a lot of people didn't see it, but I was in the Baywatch movie with The Rock, and I was wondering, am I also in Pam the Pam and Tommy because of my like who's playing Rob? Yeah, yeah who plays me in? <laughs> You know, I, you I don't even know. Like, even, I, like, yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. But like, who no, would even? We, you know, we we saw that you sent in a self tape, and I did. Yeah, I sent a self. Could not cast you off the self tape. <laughs> what? <laughs> because it's I never. I will just say something about self tape, um, just because I want to address what you said earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I have never per personally been cast as self by self tape. That makes me. Feel would you? Funny. Would you cast? Would you cast but someone? I have cast many people. Oh, wow, okay. Tape. Why? Because I am an actor and I see you guys. <laughs> yes. You right yes. by you. Wow, <laughs> that is good to know. That's encouraging. Um, I also want to ask a question, just a, just a technical question, because I feel like you come in from a very interesting perspective. This is not like a regular TV show. This is a limited series. It has a beginning, yeah. a middle, and an end. It's almost like it's a movie, it, you know, but you're coming in for two of these episodes. Craig is directing the the first Three, what is it like to come into that process as a director where, you know, obviously- Paul, you, Paul, you like, asked yeah. the nerdy, you asked the Sorry. nerdiest no. questions. All right, all right. These are the nerdiest questions. You will, I like, you, listen, it's like we're all hanging out and like really- All right, all right, no, all right. keep I going. I just think it's right, because Paul. it's like, this is a big, this definitely to me it's feels a like- a, Yeah, it's like, it's a hard thing. I would imagine it's a harder thing to do because it's like, yeah. you are telling one narrative and these people oh, are, I mean, they look amaz I mean, amazing. It was really interesting because- um, Sue Nagel actually said something really nice to me. Um, she runs Annapurna. And I was like, yeah, how, you know, how does it, you know, in trying to figure out who goes where, um, I really feel like it is intentional because as you start to get into the head of, of Pam, right. And her journey, when you'll see that she, she hurdles some pretty, um, extraordinary and profound emotional beats that it, it was necessary to have a diff maybe a different perspective and that that's the beauty of a mini series right like you get to have chapters and these chapters right. can visually pull through the same energetic painterly vibe that this woman Paula Widobro the um the incredible cinematographer on this she pull she keeps right she keeps the kind of um the consistency in the visuals and we get right. to work together. I really enjoyed her. Boy, we became really good friends. But um oh Hubel, are you okay? Well, yeah, Rob, I'm still yeah, Rob, here. I'm still here. Are I you? just put this is just for the Rams. I'm supporting the Rams and the well, Super Bowl. All right. Well you know Lake is giving a very like uh you know very well, thought I, out. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, 
I'm just, I get paid. Is this this too in the weeds, guys? Am I going to? No, not at all. It's not at all. I was just, I'm, I always have something to mess with in my hands. People are saying that they're, they're calling you, they're saying that you're pulling a double Nelly. I don't even know. No, this is not a double Nelly. This is the Rams. Go Rams. I'm going to write go Rams. But no, Lake, this is all, yes. This is what we want to, for real, keep going. No, all I was saying was that the, you know, the consistency of look and, and, right. um, you know, Craig is an incredible director and it was like, totally, I mean, full of school, it's totally intimidating coming in, yeah. being the yeah. first director after the, you know, the crew is well oiled with Craig, you know, and they're all, you know, and it's, it's pandemic. So if nobody can really see your face, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's intense. You have mostly mostly dudes but we had some female people but you know you're coming in and you're like so i'm lake <laughs> and yeah you can't see me but i have really big features and a nice smile that takes up my whole face you know i want it because i like to i like to be warm and look at people's faces and yeah show well them- you're like i i always thought that when when you were directing on children's hospital right away you got, I mean, not just because you were on Children's Hospital, but you know how to talk to actors. So that is like a whole other yes. thing of like, right. guys, here we go. This yeah. is what we're doing. Here's the deal. And now we're going to do it. And, you know, and, and like in a, in a way that is a leader and getting all these, all these people to fucking like, pay attention. Oh, Children's like, was like hurting yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like herding cats. So like now to see you like in the big leagues doing yeah, like yeah. huge stuff like this is so cool because I know that you have that shorthand with actors and you know like you know how to speak their language and you know and you also know in your mind when what you I have know. something. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. I, I'm not going to need that. I'm not going to need that. I'm only going to need this. You know what right. I mean? Right. Even when I get it, it's like I already know I have editorially what I need but I can see that the actor still wants to do it again, you know? And like that, you know, that thing is like often directors are like, we got it. Don't worry about it. And and when I see that they just want to go again, I'm like the currency of just saying, I hear you, I see you. And it's no problem. We go one more time, you know, and this one's yours. I love it. Now, yeah, that you see, like it's, there's something, there's a difference there. You understand like that process. It's awesome. It's so vulnerable. I mean, guys, Lily James, we just have to give mad props to like Lily James and Sebastian Stan. I, I, I cannot say, I, I just, I, I just don't even have the words of how, how fantastic they are. And I will just say that first of all, just looking at them when that picture came out of them, whenever that first publicity yeah. was released, I like zoomed in on it so many times. It's like, I don't understand how yeah. these people that I know how they look, look like they, it was. And then you watch them and it, it, it is, it is. It is so transformative and crazy. I feel like every they'll win every award because it just it really is like I just I just stared at it and my my and my brain broke looking at it. It yeah, really I mean, is awesome. On set, it, it's it's wild. You know, you have you know Lily coming out of her trailer and she's pa- yeah. Pamela Anderson. You know, really? it's it and you know he's you know Sebastian's just like he, they stay in character the whole time. So. There, you know, there's no way you can take on that kind of transformation without. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that was like me and Baywatch. Like when I was doing the Baywatch oh, movie oh, with The Rock, God. I was in character the whole time. I, so, you know, I, I can't, I can't say the name because I feel like I, I would be selling somebody out. But I did a movie with an actor who would intermittently go in and out of character, but would Daniel never, Day do Daniel Day Lewis Daniel Day DD DDL <laughs> would never like. I would never know when it was starting or not. So we would be like, hey, we're just talking about something that just happened. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a second, that's an odd specific. Oh, wait, now he's the character. And then I'm like, yeah. uh-uh. And then, I'm, then I'd have to like kind of spin my wheel. And I was constantly, he was constantly going in and out, but never acknowledging. Like I needed like one of those signs that they have like a, at a Bubba Gump shrimp company where it's like <laughs> run farce, run, stop farce. <laughs> I just need to know where I'm at. I will, I will meet you on both sides of it, but I cannot... I could I could not keep up with this this act. I mean, I, it really depends on the job. I mean, I when I did Man Up, which was yeah. like I play a fully realized British character, and I just I just stayed in the accent. I, I mean, I just you stayed, to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you can improvise within the dialect because 
Yeah. If you're going to be in a movie with Simon Pegg, you're going to want to be able to ping pong a little bit. And then you're going to, you don't want to run up against, uh, uh, you know, a colloquialism that yeah. you don't, you didn't know, or a, a sound, you know, and then you can't use it because it doesn't really work, you know? So I remember just like the, going down to the shops, going to the grocery store, the whole thing in the cab, always just, and then I remember calling, um, my husband, Scott, my ex-husband at the time. And I was like, uh, doing the accent. And he was like, no, <laughs> I was like, no, it's not going to work for him. Okay. Oh my, oh my God. Oh my God. Really? If my, if, my, if, my, if my, if my wife broke out into like a British, like a good, like your accent in that movie is amazing. Like I watched that movie and I was like, fucking Lake is just killing yeah. this accent. And like, yeah, if my wife like busted out that accent, I'd be like, "Oh, I'm now with a British lady." Ooh, I, I would, I would yeah. take it. I would take any accent. Um, now, yeah. like we, we've kept you here for a long time, but could we do one more thing with you? Because sure. your movie, if people have not seen In a World, it's a it's a great movie. Uh, it is about like the voiceover world, and we mm. thought we would do something fun. We could do it with you, but we have a a trailer from a movie, a Lifetime film. Uh, oh. it's a thriller and we we're going to turn down the volume and we wanted to see if you could, Oh my gosh, it, it, we, we could, we could, we could go with, we could, we, how, how do you want to do it, Rob? Like, what do you think we should do? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, I think that's the best thing. I, I think we'll just turn down the volume and just whatever you yeah, think this movie, yeah, whatever Give you think this little, movie yeah. is about, I will I mean, not you know, know it's about. <laughs> you've not well, seen the trailer. Yeah. We will be watching the trailer together. I will say that Amish is a theme. And okay. murder is a theme. So Amish murder is a part of it. So just to give you a, a I, sense I, of how. Yeah. You don't overthink it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't right, overthink yeah, okay. it. Don't overthink it. Can you hear uh, me okay? Yeah. If I do, like, hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, here, okay, we go. here we go. Yeah, oh, yeah. We love this. All right, great. Oh, here we go. All right. All right do we want, we want... In a oh, yeah. world. Oh, shit. All right. Sorry. Now we'll get, wait, hold on. Okay. What's it, please? Here we go. Hold on. Sorry. We're getting pretty professional here. Guys. Get it together. Right. Here we Molly. Go. Molly. 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 Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Molly's figuring it out. Do? She's going to get back. No, you did it. You were did ready great. to go. You did a great job. My, the headband uh, is helping. The headband helps. I can't. Yeah, we'll get it already. Otherwise, it would if we, uh, It was buffering. We'll see. Um, all right. So people can watch us on Hulu. We'll hopefully, we'll oh, get that thing back. Work? Okay. We'll do it all next right, we'll see. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did it not work? Molly. All right. Oh, wait. Molly's going to come back. Is she coming back? Tell us, Molly. What do you think? You don't have to. You can all do this. Okay. I, let's You're see in? if it works. Here we go. We'll let's try. see if it works. Let's try it. And if it doesn't, let's try it. it doesn't work. We'll do that. We have a bit. We'll edit it out. We'll edit it out. We'll edit it all out. Oh, really? This, won't, this gonna... won't go live. Yeah. This is not working. This is not working. Forget it. Not you know what? Work. I don't think we can put not YouTube clips work. in uh, PowerPoint. But, uh, but that was okay. awesome to have you here, Lake. And the so main great. thing is Pam and Tommy, Hulu sure. now, and what else? And um, I, yeah, I, I play Harley. I, I play in Harley Quinn. I play uh, Poison Ivy. Yes. yes. Which is also a great relationship. And it's such uh, a good friend of no, mine has created that show. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And what about Pat's Secret Life of Pets? That's you also. Yeah, that's you a like, cat? <laughs> yeah I play a very voluptuous cat. My daughter <laughs> loves it. My daughter. Oh, loves no. it. I mean, finally, when you do those things, then all of a sudden your kids are just like, oh, I know. You know. you know what else she's watching right now is my daughter is watching Sing with uh, oh, yeah. Kroll. Uh, like all these, oh. yeah, Kroll. Yeah. And, and like she, she's literally quoting Kroll to me all the yeah, time. Yeah, I know. Uh, like, good too. Like, I, I don't want to like melt her brain so, and tell her that like we know all of, but you know, I went, <laughs> I went over, I went over to, Nick's house uh, to drop something off. And cool. my son, my youngest son is a fan of Sing and he knows Nick does the voice because one time Nick did it for him <laughs> and he's so excited to go talk to the pig from Sing. We go to Nick's house. Nick, first of all, without prompting, without anything, engages my youngest son <laughs> with this voice, doing a full thing. And my son, if, if you are Nick, uh, you're facing me. My son just turns like this. <laughs> and stares at the wall. Yeah, it's and too much. Did not look at Nick the entire yeah. time and did not acknowledge him. I was like, Sam. And then, and then as we left, he's like, "That was fun." I was like, "You didn't even look at him. He's doing a full show for you, and you didn't even acknowledge you know the it's man." Too, it's too much. I, I mean, voice, honestly, yeah. yeah. The the voiceover thing to kids is only sadness when they realize. Like now, my daughter says to me, she says, 
is is that just an actor? That's just an actor, right? That's just someone yeah. doing the voice. And I'm like, I, yeah, I, it is. Yeah. It is. It's just I my think, turn. I think with um, my kids, the, the, I think the biggest concept is like trying to figure out you're in the movie. Did, so did you wear the cat outfit? Right. You, right. Like, what was the hair and makeup like for that? You know, that's, yeah. why, that's why I was hoping that we'd all get into the uh, the the movie musical cats because they actually did wear the cat costumes in that. And, and, and I know. And oh look, yeah. Um, that looks. Yeah. But so my son always goes like this. My, my son. Show. That's good. My son always goes, but it but did it happen? I go, no, no, yeah. it's a movie. He goes, but did it happen? I'm like, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to like well, break that down. Says, no, 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 that's real. Yeah, yeah. that's like, real. Oh, okay. I mean, real in terms of, yes, it's a real movie. Yes. Yeah. Um, but no. uh, but Harley Quinn is great. Also on HBO Max. Uh, this is uh, Pam and Tommy on Hulu next week. Your episode four and seven, but watch the whole series. Uh, yeah, right. Lake, so great to have you. And we will bring you Thank you, Lake. Uh, great to see voiceover. you, buddy. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Paul, you aren't. You can't just drop people. You have to let them say nope. goodbye. You know, thank That's you. It. I gotta or... get out. I got. We got to get out. We got to get <sighs> out. We, you know, we don't want to leave people hanging. I will way, say. Yeah. I will say. Lake is. Lake is like one of my favorite people. The best. But the chat. I mean, I hope she wasn't Seth. the. Ch literally, the chat was like, "Oh my god! Like this girl is amazing. Like this. Like." so sexy like i i was like embarrassed like, you know, i'm in love i want to marry yeah, Lake. I yeah wanna, you, you know, know and like there's... she's you know she, i'm sure she's got uh, she's got some people uh, you know on yeah. tap but i also think you know what i love about the show truly and this and the people here that are watching these shows and come yeah uh every week is that they allow us to have a dumb, dumb conversation. And then we can actually have like a real conversation like we had with Xander and, and yeah. Lake about some big things. And you all are uh, great, uh, great uh, like advocates in the chat for those real conversations too. That's just always a, a lovely thing to see. So yeah. Uh, and also people got upset when I did this. I think people are worried that maybe the Rams are not going to go to the Super Bowl. Let me tell everyone that the Chargers. Rams... No, Paul, the Chargers aren't going. Okay, the the Los Angeles well, it depends Rams. What happens this weekend? No, I I went to the game last weekend and the Rams won, so now they're going. Uh, but anyway, um, well, Rob, I I want to I I guess I want to ask. I, there's there's something like, we've talked about Murderville, your show, yeah. Murderville, uh, which is on Netflix. It's not my show. It isn't my show, but uh, show you I created, am, you created and starred in. I didn't but, create. Can I talk about the the thing that has been going on that I saw today? I don't know if if you'll even see it. Maybe you can try to catch it before uh, it gets fixed. I hope, I, mean, this not, I hope this is not the viral thing. There's a there's been a lot of um, there's one thing that's really caught everyone's attention. That's yeah. I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna make problem. sure I get it all. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is this is kind of crazy. I'm gonna I'm just open it up. So tell us in the show what happens is. Uh, Will Arnett plays a detective and he's paired with a yeah. actor who yeah. doesn't know what's going on and they're improvising their part, but everyone else has written parts, right? That's right? The show is fully scripted and then they bring in a guest star that has no idea what's going on and they can say or do anything they want and the other actors have to kind of like follow them and try to like steer them a little bit. But um, yeah, and at the end of the half hour, they have to solve a murder. They have to, the, the guest star has to say who did the murder of the people that I have met in this half hour, who did the murder? And so, you so play I, what? I, 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 well, I am, I play triplets in episode two, the Marshawn Lynch episode. I play all three murder suspects. There are, in every episode, there are three murder suspects that they have to go and talk to. I play all three because... As you know, um, you know, acting is like uh, reacting. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's a oh. it's like it's like my listening. Special, no, oh. Oh. it's my special gift from God. Oh. And um, so I was asked to play all three suspects. So totally different characters, you know, was it? Well, I mean, it worked because we all remember the Marshawn Lynch story, by the way, if you've not uh familiar with that story you can look back at past episodes or uh look at the friend zone uh uh instagram page and can see rob rob you were so convincing that marshawn believed that there were that you had brothers 
Yes. Well, that, yeah, that's a, uh, um, a sub topic, but yes, uh, <laughs> at the end of shooting with Marshawn, you know, when I shared this on the show before a couple months ago, um, Marshawn said to me, um, and I, and I, I will, I, let me preface this, that Marshawn Lynch is the funniest dude, the nicest dude, so funny and super smart. There was just this one little moment with him after we were done shooting where he said to me something very confusing. He said, I just want to tell you what an honor it is to meet you. And I said, oh, well, thanks, man. You know, I'm such a fan of yours. So it was an honor for me. And he said, no, no, but for real, dude like i've been texting all my friends that i'm working with you and they're blown away and i said oh uh wow so now i'm starting to think he thinks i'm someone else he think who does he think i am and then he says yeah dog naked gun is my favorite movie of all time and i said oh you think i'm leslie nielsen um leslie nielsen actually died 10 years ago and Marshawn, you know, his brain melted. Yeah. And, you know, so that was, that was, that was one thing. And then, yes, the other thing was I do play triplets on the show. I play three identical brothers and that was another sort of, you know, thing he brought up in conversation with me. He said, um, what is it like to be a triplet? Yeah. And that was, that was tricky. Now, and Here's I said, the, you know, I yeah. told him, I said, Marshawn, you know, I'm not a triplet. I'm just me, one person, and I'm wearing three different color shirts, you know, on, on the different days, you know, so that's yeah, how. Yeah, we well, and now uh, I will say that you are playing a triplet, which involves some, you know, trickery. And this is some what, camera, uh, camera tricks. yeah, some yeah. Camera so tricks, yeah. this is what so happened the, today on Netflix. I saw, right? Yeah, there was a little, there was a little screw up on Netflix and if you look very closely, you can see all three of me together. And the way they do that is with camera tricks, they they put us together. You know, you can see how the walls line up. They just sort of cut and paste those together. Unfortunately, um, they hired uh, a company. Have you ever heard of Paul Industrial Light and Magic? It's oh a, yeah, uh, sure. They do all the uh, the big movies, all the big movies like Moon Crash. Yeah, very expensive <laughs> special effects company. They did Moon Crashers and such. So this was a little thing that slipped in under the wire, I guess. Where Whoa. they forgot to take out. Now some people looked at this on and they said, "Oh, well, you're just wearing headphones in one." And you're not wearing no, headphones. No, no, it's no. Obviously, two different people. So, yes. it, they, they people thought that they had figured out the mystery, but they were so far off. They weren't even in the right town. I'm going to say this: this is probably going to get fixed, but maybe this is the the chance for people to go watch the show immediately to see if you can catch this blooper. I, I mean, this is a say, this is a blooper, major major blooper, and I would say watch it right away and see if it's still in there. It's probably been fixed by now. Uh, ILM, those wizards, they've probably fixed it. I want to say this, Paul, that it has um, kind of blown out um, one of the biggest secrets in Hollywood, which is I don't do any of my own acting. Mm. And I, I know that I'm going to be um, upsetting some people and maybe even yourself. Um, I sit at home and I have someone that looks kind of like me, this gentleman up on the top. Right sort of like me now he has gray hair i have gray hair he's white i'm white we're this roughly the same height you eddie murphy it the eddie murphy has multiple eddie doubles murphy, yeah thank you. he goes and does all of my scenes and then they shoot a close-up on a green screen of just me and i go like this oh wow wow you don't even say the lines and then they 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 digitally remove my head and they put in all of the words that they need. Holy cow! That's like, like almost like the way they do Luke Skywalker on the book of Boba Fett. It's the exact. Uh, wow, that is amazing. Uh, by the way, I wanted to say uh, thank you to Kelly uh, Voicer X who subscribed for twelve months here. Uh, that's amazing. But Rob, this is a real insight into the acting world. I'm gonna say, um, in in the spirit 
of this, like of coming clean and, and, and having these like kind of corrections and omissions. There are some corrections and omissions from tonight's show. If you, if you want to quickly just go over it. The first one is coming from uh, Steve Agee. Okay. Uh, Steve Agee is saying he does not want anyone to think that he is in favor of ramming a cart. He's like, that is not my bit. It is Fonzie's bit. So okay. if people go out there, do not quote Steve Agee and say that that's Steve Agee's bit. That is, that is Fonzie's bit. Does he mean Fonzie the Happy Days character or Henry Winkler the actor? Beloved, I think he means Fon. I think he means Fonzie because I don't think Henry Winkler would do something like that. So I think Fonzie the character, not Fonzie the actor, because I don't know that Fonzie acted. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then the second uh, thing I want to do a correction and omission on is uh, this is an omission. Uh, Lake was saying that she was seeing that people were asking about her eyeshadow. Yeah. And she Are said that she gets it from a small company on Etsy called Crush Cosmetics, all one word. And we are putting up the link in the chat right now. So that's Crush wow. Cosmetics, all one word on Etsy. And uh, the, the chat, okay. uh, it's in the chat. Honestly, Paul, sometimes this feels like a real show and uh, uh, every now and then we get to do one of these real ones yeah every now and then it feels like a real show Th this is one of those now did you want to finish the show with our oscar jokes uh yeah you want to do one more oscar joke i mean i want i uh, although i also feel like i want to show you this one thing molly can we pull up that oh one? yeah yeah, yeah, can yeah, we, yeah all right because yeah, yeah. in the interest of this show performing a public service right and that yeah. is to help our fellow human beings I want to show you a crime that was committed today, and I want the internet to start sleuthing. Uh, Molly, do you uh, do you have that clip from uh, from Twitter? Let's see, I'm waiting for uh, you know. Um, if we don't, I can maybe even pull it up myself. Yeah, um, as soon as I said this feels like a real show, then we uh, some, yeah, that we dropped we dropped the ball. But I mean, but uh, you know, hold on a second. I'm going to see if I can get this up because I think. Uh, okay, so this is it. Uh, a real crime happened on Twitter today to Michael Rappaport. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Rob, you have not seen this yet. Uh, I haven't seen it. All right, so uh, blow it up, Molly, as big as you can. Um, and uh, let's take a listen. You know, this whole crap with this cancel culture and the... Shut <laughs> up! Shit! Shut the fuck up! Nobody wants oh, to hear it. Fucker. You've been talking all fucking week. You don't care what you have to say. Just stop talking. You got me right in my fucking head, right, asshole. Stop. Damn it. So, you know, this what? whole crap with this cancel culture and the. Shut up. Shit. Shut the fuck So, Michael Rappaport was hit in. Uh, Wait the a second. second. Is that real, Paul? Uh, I, I, it, it feels real to me, although it, it, if it's a bit, it's a beautiful bit. I mean, that is a. It's. Perfect, I, but someone hit Michael Rappaport in the head with a snowball in the middle I of one of his like rants. That's real. I feel like that is real. I don't know that he would that he would set someone up to do that. I although it, it's yeah. so it's, it's so, so fulfilling. Funny. Yeah, it's so it's it's too like I believe it's too subtle to be fake. Like I think that you and I might do a bit like that. I don't know if like Rappaport is on that level. Like I think Michael Rappaport is a very funny guy. I don't think he's thinking about like doing like like Eric Andre level uh, stunts. Uh, so he is looking for the snowball thrower. He wants to find them. Uh, let's, so. let's let's do a little CSI. Can you show me that clip and slow it down right when the snowball hits? Because by the way, like it's like a white man. I know it's a white man because the voice yeah. is a white man voice. Uh, it seems like someone in the business suit saw their shoes. All right, so that's the snow. All right, there it is. All right, there it someone is. Someone comes up behind him. Beautiful hit. <laughs> I mean, that is a that's close. That is a real close shot. It gets all over the lens. All right, yeah, now we're gonna see. All right, so now this is the first glimpse that we get to see. Um, okay, it, I feel like this could be real. It, it has to be. Now that that we're slowing it down, so I feel like the guy's in black. There he is. There's his, his feet. Um, mm. Not enough information to go on. Uh, but that that foot, that's about all we got. We got those feet. That and the voice. The voice is. Let's hear it one more time. The, the voice one more time. Uh, okay. Those feet, those shoes are very specific. They are. You know, this whole crap with this cancel culture and the. Shut up. Shit. Shut the fuck up. 
Nobody wants oh, to hear it. Fucker. You've been talking all fucking week. You don't care what you have to say. Just stop talking. You got me right in my fucking head, right, asshole. Stop. Damn it. <laughs> Uh, a beautiful, a beautiful moment in New York City streets that someone saw him taping, prepared it, and then, I mean, that's taking your shot right there. I mean, they took their shot. Holy shit. I, oh, my God. I, I think that's real. I think, I think that's it's real. real. In the yeah. chat, what do we think? I mean, people say, it, I think it's fake, but a good bit. Uh, I don't know. I yeah. mean, we don't know. We're going to find out. I mean, we'll it, find out. Now, yeah, Paul, we'll find you out. Yeah. To, should we, we'll say, maybe we should save the cameos for, I Valentine's. think we save that for Valentine's day. We have uh, Super Bowl stuff next week. We got Valentine's day stuff next week. Yeah. We got a lot of stuff on the docket. Uh, it was That's great uh, having our guest, Steve Agee. Uh, I mean, really, this, Bell. Was, this was, would you say these were the biggest guests we've had in I mean, one show? I mean, yeah. we did have Seth Rogen. We did have Nick Offerman. We did have Judy yeah. Greer. We did have Jason Manzoukas. We oh, had no, a lot I of mean, we've had we've had a lot of famous people. It's just like to have real together on the show. together on a show that we actually got in front of. Like Peacemaker is reaching a high point. Uh, Pam and Tommy is like boom, just came out. Like I feel like we're yeah. top of the topical nature of the show. Your show came out today. Everything yeah. is coming together. We're doing it again. This is, this is where, you know, how I make my money for my family. If you're in the market for a sausage, that's the size of a tiny dick. You could do a lot worse than Libby's Vienna sausages. Libby's. No, no, it's not. No. Oh, Look, I just got a new sponsor, Paul. Andy oh, Caps wow. Hot Fries. I got those downstairs. Oh, my gosh. All right, well, Rob, yes. uh, who are we going to raid, Molly? Uh, Private Three Comedy. We're going to raid them. All right, we're going to do that. Uh, we are raiding them right now. Uh, thank you, everybody. And we were going to actually thanks gonna sign to Steve, off. Steve, and thanks to Lake, and thanks to Molly. And um, our, you know, yeah, Super Producer Molly for pulling all this stuff together. Always. She's amazing. Watch her shows when they pop up here on Friend Zone as well. And we'll see you next week. Uh, for another big show. Bye, everybody. Well, that's it. Uh, join us next time. And if you like the show, uh, remember to like, subscribe, do all the things that you would do on YouTube. And if you want to watch the show live, do it every Thursday, 5 to 7 Pacific time. Just go to twitch.tv slash friendzone. See you next week.